we've seen that bulky substituents prefer to be in the equatorial position versus the axial position in our chair conformation. Sometimes you need to actually quantify that energy difference with numbers, especially for complicated polysubstituted cyclohexanes. So here's a chart that shows you the an estimation of the difference in energy between axial and equatorial. So a chlorine, a chloro group, prefers to be in the equatorial position by 2 kilojoules per mole. An OH group 4.2, methyl group 7.6, an ethyl group 8, an isopropyl group 9.2, and the bulkiest group, a tert butyl alkyl group 22.8. So the tert butyl group much prefers to be in the equatorial position by 22.8 kilojoules per mole, since it is the bulkiest out of all the ones here. Let's look at an example of a tri-substituted cyclohexane and let's see if we can figure out which conformation, which chair conformation is the most stable. So let's start by drawing our cyclohexane ring and this molecule is called neomethyl chloride. So neomethyl chloride has an isopropyl group uh, coming out at us at carbon 1, a chloro group coming out at us at carbon 2, and a methyl group uh, going away from us at carbon 4. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that is neomethyl chloride. If I wanted to draw a chair conformation for neomethyl chloride, well, I go ahead and very carefully draw my chair conformation, and I go up, down, up, down, up, down, and do my equatorial, so down, up, down, up, down, and up. So let's go ahead and draw the other chair. Okay, so very slowly, right, you draw your, your other chair. So it looks something like that. So this is now carbon one, so we go down, up, down, up, down, and up, and then the equatorial one, so up, down, up, down, up, and down. Let's go ahead and put our groups in. So at carbon 1 for neomethyl chloride, we have an isopropyl group up. So we have an iso, here's carbon 1 on my first chair conformation, so an isopropyl group up like that. And at carbon 2, we have chlorine up. So here is carbon 2, so we're going to put a chlorine up like that. And at carbon 4, we have a methyl group. So over here is carbon 4. The methyl group needs to be down relative to the plane of the ring, so there is my methyl group going down. When this chair conformation undergoes a ring inversion, or when it undergoes a ring flipping, the isopropyl group at carbon 1, this is now carbon 1 on my second chair conformation, the isopropyl group was up and axial, so it's going to end up up and equatorial, like that. At carbon 2, this is carbon 2, we had a chlorine that was up and equatorial, so the chlorine is going to end up up and axial after the ring flipping. See the previous few, few videos for uh, how to do ring flipping. And at carbon 4, we had a methyl group, which was down and axial, so the methyl group ends up down and equatorial. So now we have two chair conformations, and it's not immediately obvious which chair conformation is the most stable. To figure that out, we need to, we need to check out our table here. So if we start with the, the isopropyl group, on the chair conformation on the left, it's axial. On the chair conformation on the right, it's equatorial. And we know there's an energy difference associated uh, with that change in position of the isopropyl group. That energy difference is 9.2 kilojoules per mole. So the conformation on the left has an additional uh, 9.2 kilojoules per mole of strain by having that isopropyl group axial. Let's look next at the chlorine. So here I have chlorine equatorial on the left, and then here I have chlorine axial on the right. So we know that the chlorine prefers to be equatorial. Um, let's see how much 
strain it would give us to put it axial. So what is the what is the energy difference? It's 2.0. So for the molecule, for the conformation, I should say, on the right, having that chlorine axial introduces another two kilojoules per mole of strain. Finally, the methyl group. Here I have the methyl group axial on the left. On the right, it's equatorial. So again, it prefers to be equatorial. So putting it axial is going to introduce some extra strain. How much strain by putting that methyl group axial? 7.6 kilojoules per mole. So the conformation on the left has 9.2 from the isopropyl group and 7.6 from the methyl group. So obviously, the conformation on the left is much higher in energy than the conformation on the right. So the conformation on the right is the most stable conformation. The molecule will spend most of its time in the conformation on the right. So the chlorine is axial. So for neomethyl chloride, most of the time the molecule is spent in in the conformation on the right with the chlorine axial. And that can be important for chemical reactions, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Let's compare neomethyl chloride to methyl chloride. So they're very similar. They're very similar in terms of dot structures. So let's go ahead and draw the cyclohexane ring for methyl chloride. Methyl chloride also has an isopropyl group coming out at you. At at carbon 1. At carbon 2, the chlorine is now going away from us. And at carbon 4, the methyl group is going away from us. So the only difference between methyl chloride and neomethyl chloride is at carbon 2. So at carbon 2, one has, uh, one has the chlorine going out at you and the neomethyl chloride. And for this one, for methyl chloride, the chlorine is going away from us. So everything else is the same. So let's go ahead and draw our chair conformations for methyl chloride. So, so here's my chair conformation. So here we go up and down, up, down, up, down, equatorial. So down, up, down, up, down, and up. Let's go ahead and do the other one now. So we very carefully get our cyclohexane ring. And then this is now carbon one. So down, up down, up, down, up, and then up, and down, up, and down, up, and down. So now that we have our two chairs, let's focus in on carbon one, where my isopropyl group is coming out at me. It's going up relative to the plane. So my isopropyl group is going up at carbon one right here. At carbon two, my chlorine is going down. So here's carbon 2. My chlorine is going down. That must mean the chlorine is axial, like that. And at carbon 3, my methyl group is going down. So, sorry, carbon 4, my methyl group is going down. So at carbon 4, right here, my methyl group must be going down. When this conformation undergoes ring flipping, the isopropyl group at carbon 1 will now go here. It was up and axial, so now it's going to go up and equatorial at carbon one. My chlorine was down and axial at carbon two, so when it undergoes ring flipping, it's going to be down and equatorial. And my methyl group at carbon four, so here is carbon four on my second chair conformation. My methyl group was down and axial, so now it's going to be down and equatorial. So we'll go ahead and fit my methyl group in there. Which one of these two conformations is the most stable? Well, once again, we start with our isopropyl group. On the left, it's axial. On the right, it's equatorial. Having the isopropyl group axial introduces, we've already seen that's going to introduce 9.2 kilojoules per mole of extra strain. So we have 9.2 kilojoules additional energy on the left. The chlorine. On the left, it's axial. On the right, it's equatorial. So once again, the one on the left is going to get an additional, an additional strain of 2 kilojoules per mole. So we're going to go ahead and add uh, 2 kilojoules. And finally, we have a methyl group axial and a methyl group equatorial. So once again, the axial methyl group is going to introduce 7.6 
uh, of additional strain. So obviously, the molecule, the conformation on the left is much higher in energy than the conformation on the right. So the conformation on the right is going to be the most stable. All of your groups are equatorial. So menthol chloride is going to spend most of its time in this conformation, most of its time with the chlorine equatorial. And in a reaction that we will cover in future videos, um, a, cl a chlorine atom has to be axial in order for the reaction to occur. So because menthol chloride spends most of its time in this conformation, it's not going to react as fast via that mechanism because most of the time the chlorine is spent equatorial. Only a small portion is spent with the chlorine axial. That's in contrast to the previous example of neomenthal chloride, where neomenthal chloride spends most of its time with the chlorine in the axial position. So for this reaction, uh, since neomenthal chloride spends most of its time with the chlorine in the axial position, it's actually easiest for this mechanism to proceed. And so the mechanism will proceed, and the reaction will proceed much faster for neomenthal chloride than for menthol chloride by a factor of about 200. So this is why we have to understand conformations um, in order to understand how some reactions occur.